So we're now in our third season of the Golden State Warriors being a dominant team and they pretty much came out of nowhere if you think back. Back in the year 2013 when they beat the Denver Nuggets that series was considered an upset. Just a year later they lost to the Clippers in the game 7 but it was clear that they were on to something they were an up and coming team and then in 2015 out of nowhere they became a dominant 60 win team that went on to win the NBA championship. Only one season after that they went on to break a record that was two decades old in the Chicago Bulls 72 and 10 record becoming the 73 and 9 Warriors and I bet you if you would have rewinded back to the year 2013 when they were knocked out by the Spurs, absolutely nobody would have called this to be the team that was going to break the 72 and 10 record one day, and especially not just three seasons later. Since they've been the dominant team of the West, that means they've had the honor of going against LeBron James in the finals every year because the NBA right now is basically the West team versus whatever team LeBron James is on. And if everything goes how we all expect it to, we are going to be getting the Warriors Cavs Part 3 in the finals in about a less than a month. And today, I'm here to give you guys three reasons why they're rivalry is actually a bad thing for the NBA in my opinion. What's up NBA fans, Dom2K on the mic, and I want to be clear that I'm not saying the Warriors Cavaliers Part 3 is particularly bad for the NBA because I actually think Part 3s are a good thing when it comes to rivalries and I'm going to get to that later in the video. However, I am pointing out reasons why the Cavs and Warriors rivalry as a whole is bad for the NBA. Now don't get me wrong, it is good for the NBA's revenue obviously, you get to see amazing players like Steph Curry and now Kevin Durant versus LeBron James, so it's good on that front, but I have my own opinions on why. I think their rivalry as a whole hasn't been all that good, especially this year. So that's what we're going to go ahead and get into. Number three, ruins most of the playoffs. So I wanted to go ahead and put the most obvious one first, and I think more so this year in 2017, I think we felt the effects of the Cavaliers and Warriors ruining the rest of the playoff series more so than in previous years. So in the 2016 playoff season, we had the Warriors and the Thunder play in the Western Conference Finals, and not only did the Warriors end up going down 3-1, but I think coming into that series, there was a feeling of the Warriors really might lose this one because that was back when Kevin Durant was playing with Russell Westbrook, and they were a legitimate threat to the Warriors, we all knew that. And then even on the Eastern Conference side, the Cavaliers were playing the Raptors in the conference finals. Most of us thought the Cavaliers were going to kill them, but they ended up dropping two games. Now, not that that made a difference in most of our predictions, but it was at least a bit more interesting than what we've got this year. And this year, two rounds through the playoffs, we've got the Warriors and Cavaliers clearly head and shoulders above everybody in their conference. And that's not even just an opinion, however, that's kind of backed up by facts. So, you see the Warriors are on a historic pace with their point spread because they're blowing out every team they play. I think the point spread is something like 15 points a game that they're winning their games by. And then the Cavaliers are playing some of the best offense, if not the best offense in this year's playoffs. So even though we've got a great series about to kick off tomorrow at the time of this recording where the Warriors are going to be playing the Spurs, and then the Cavaliers are going to get some pretty gritty teams in whoever wins Game 7s between the Wizards and Celtics, I think there's a general understanding that these teams are heavy, heavy favorites. So you never count out a Popovich-led team because we've seen what they can do. I mean, they just won a closeout game without Kawhi Leonard against the Rockets who seemed to be a very tough opponent until the Monstars took that talent. I know most years we have favorites to make the NBA Finals and sometimes those favorites end up making it, but when you can just outright call it from the very beginning of the season because the two teams in their conferences are just that much better than everybody else they have to play against, it definitely ruins the playoffs a little bit. Number 2. Nothing's Gonna Get Settled as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I don't think Cavs and Warriors Part 3 is particularly bad for the NBA, I just think their rivalry as a whole is kind of awkward and it's pretty different than a lot of the other matchups we've had throughout history. So I think Part 3 is a good because they offer closure. And in the 80s, the Celtics and Lakers played three times, and it was good because you got to have the tiebreaker where the Los Angeles Lakers won two and the Celtics won one, and that's kind of how it should go. With LeBron James and the Spurs, we've seen that three times and I think most of us are okay if we never see it again. Not that we wouldn't like to see it, but but we've already had the closure from it because the Spurs won the first round, LeBron came back and got one off of them, then the Spurs came back and avenged that one just a year later, and it's like, okay, cool, it's done, we don't really need to see it anymore. However, what you get with the Cavaliers and Warriors is you kind of get the idea that even if we do get that finals and the Warriors win like everyone expects them to, it's kind of hard to fit this one in with the other matchups that the Cavaliers and Warriors have had because of the addition of Kevin Durant, and that's what makes it so awkward. Because when they met the first time in 2015, we saw that LeBron James didn't have Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love so we were like okay we definitely need this rematch when they're all healthy because now there's something to prove. So 2016 happened there were some more injuries but still we got the amazing game 7 and the Cavaliers came out on top. So I think at that point most of us would be okay in saying that yes we do need a part 3 just so we can break the 1-1 one -one tie but we needed that part 3 against the same teams that played with minor additions right so if the Warriors and the Cavaliers added some small pieces or whatever they retooled so they could make it to the NBA finals that's cool and then we get a part 3 who 
whoever wins wins and they can go their separate ways. We never need to see Cavs and Warriors again. But I think we all understand that if these two teams meet and there's no injuries and there's no suspensions, with the addition of Kevin Durant, the Warriors are pretty much supposed to win this finals. So if they do win it, people are going to say, well, they were supposed to win anyways. They added Kevin Durant. It's not on the Cavaliers or LeBron that they couldn't beat them. And so this pretty much offers a one-way street between the two teams and I don't like that as much because it's basically saying if the Warriors win, who cares because they were supposed to win. And everyone's pretty much looking for this finals and they're looking for the Cavaliers to do what they're calling the impossible and beating the best roster ever put on paper. So really the only way anything gets settled is if the Cavaliers pull off the impossible and beat them and now they've repeated over the Warriors and they have beat the best roster of all time and that's just kind of how people are viewing this finals. And that's probably my biggest gripe with the Cavaliers Warriors rivalry is that the chemistry of the team changed so much so quickly. So whenever two teams are having a rivalry we've never really seen a team's core change. We've never seen a team add a piece so dominant that it just kind of changes the entire matchup. But this kind of leads into my number one point of why I think this rivalry isn't really a good thing for the NBA. Number 1. No foreseeable end at the moment when people talk about NBA history, they generally look at the 1960s and say there weren't a lot of teams, there wasn't a whole lot of competition, so there's no wonder why the Celtics and Lakers were in the finals every year. And then you get to where we are now where you say there's at least enough talented team and players where you don't get a repeat of the same exact thing every year, it switches up a little bit to keep us interested. However, there's a couple of weird things going on right now. First of all, never in NBA history have we had a team meet three consecutive times in the NBA finals, which is pretty much about to happen if everything goes how we expect it. And that's pretty mind-boggling to think that back in the times when the Celtics and Lakers were making the finals every year, not even they could meet three times consecutively in the NBA finals. But the thing that's really bad for the NBA is, from where we're sitting right now, there's not a foreseeable end to this rivalry. So if time travel was possible and a future version of myself came from the year 2019 to tell me we were now on the fifth matchup of the Warriors and Cavaliers, I would not be surprised. I'm not saying for sure that we're going to have five straight matchups from where we're sitting because it's impossible to call what's going to happen two years down the line. There's trades, there's free agency, there's injuries, so of course something could intervene and we might have some different teams by then. However, I think we could kind of pretty comfortably predict that the 2018 finals will probably be the Cavaliers and Warriors again, because if nothing dramatic happens this summer, as in the Spurs don't acquire Chris Paul, the Celtics don't get a star like Jimmy Butler, Goran Hayward, or Paul George, or just something dramatic to where there's another big three born or another really, really dominant team, without the help of injuries or something like that, yeah, these are the heavy favorites again with the current rosters. So as I was discussing in my last point, when you have a rivalry like this with two teams that have split the previous NBA Finals, yes, you you ideally want a part three, just like with the Celtics and Lakers from 2008 and 2010, we all wanted a part three just so we could see the teams finally come together and just break the tie and then go their separate ways. After that happens this year, does anybody really want to see a part four or a part five? I don't even know how the NBA would sell that. And one of the arguments I've seen for people that do like this Warriors-Cavs rivalry and they say that it's not a bad thing for the NBA. NBA, they say, well, look at the 80s. Back then, you had the Celtics and Lakers, and they were dominating, and back then, people called it competition. They didn't care that it was two teams dominating. And then they talk about the 90s Bulls, but the biggest difference there, and specifically in the 80s Celtics and Lakers, is you have to look at, they weren't playing each other in the NBA Finals every single year, and as I stated before, they didn't play three times in a row. That's the biggest difference there. So yes, every year from 1980 to 1989, there was either the Celtics or the Lakers in the NBA Finals, but they were either playing each other, they played each other three times, which was good because you got your closure, but then they played against other teams. So you had the Celtics and Rockets, and you had the Lakers, and you had the Sixers. It was different teams. I'm pretty well prepared to deal with the fact that the Warriors and Cavaliers are going to be at the top of the NBA for a pretty long time, and yes, one or the other is probably going to be in the next few NBA Finals. I get that. But to see these two teams play each other every single year in the NBA Finals, which isn't, you don't know how likely that is just because of things that intervene like injuries and whatnot, but should we get a fourth or a fifth? You know, I don't really know a lot of people that want to deal with that. And one little bonus point I wanted to throw in there is that it's never good for the NBA to be this reliant on one or two really good teams because then the problem becomes what happens when one of those teams doesn't make it and there's not a good replacement for the other. So have you ever recognized the fact that nobody talks about the time the New Jersey Nets made the NBA Finals against the Spurs and the Lakers? Excuse my language, that's because nobody fucking cared. <laughs> nobody cared about that Nets team, they didn't stand a chance against the Lakers and they lost to the Spurs the very next year. So I just say that to say if the Warriors make the NBA Finals for the next few years because that's very possible 
possible with Kevin Durant still on the team, just in the event that for whatever reason the Cavaliers don't make it, then you got something like the Warriors versus who? Even this year, hell, they haven't made it yet. What if it was the Wizards or Celtics? I enjoy watching John Wall. I love watching Isaiah Thomas, but I'm very well aware neither one of them stand a chance to beat the Warriors four times, not even close. However, I've already talked about this in a previous video. I don't want to be redundant. And besides, I think we all understand the power imbalance inside the conferences and whatnot. We're all well aware of that. Anyways, those are my thoughts on why this Warriors Cavs rivalry isn't really a good thing for the NBA. I made this video because I saw a lot of differing opinions when I made this post on my Instagram account. A lot of people felt like it was a good thing. Some people agreed with me that it wasn't. And I figured there'd probably be differing opinions in the comment section. So I made it and I wanted to see what you guys think. Make sure to comment your thoughts. Hit like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'm Don2K. Hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications on my videos. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.